I win this leadership race, which is job one, is the leadership race, I have to win that first, but I do intend for the general public of Ontario to know that rural economic development will be a big focus for me. Uh, so I may as well get out and talk, start talking about it now. Well, it is. You know, you can't assume that we have all the answers we don't, and this leadership race is truly a three-month stint. It's like a, it's really a 100-meter dash. Um, typically, these things last almost a year, so it's very compressed in time. I want to be certain that by the time I'm talking about, even at a high level, what my focus will be for real eco uh, rural economic development, that I'm getting a sense that I'm on the right page. And the time I'm spending in all of these areas of rural Ontario matter, whether it's rural in the north, rural in the east, uh, rural in central Ontario, um, some of these issues are the same. The infrastructure required to make that economic development work in rural provincial government plays in that area is key. Um, I believe it's about jobs in the economy, and for me, running for leader, which means right now, running for premier, the general public needs to know what am I going to be about? Um, we're going to do great things as a liberal centre's government if our economy is flourishing. So to me, the economy is the number one issue. I want to get back to talking about that again, and we've not been talking about that for this last year at Queen's Park. You know, it's interesting that you say that. Now, whether it needs to be a, a ministry or a, a sort of a secretary of state, I don't know the actual construct, uh, but did occur to me that in greater areas, that rural filter that has to occur, um, sometimes in hindsight, which is always 2020, right? Uh, sometimes you have to have that filter to say everything we do, what's the consequence? Sometimes the unintended consequence when you try to apply that to rural Ontario. We might have. Uh, we might have uh, stepped up our game a bit had we done that in advance. So no time like the present. There may be an opportunity to do that. Um, you may not have to change. You may just have to say, you've got to have a rural filter on this stuff. Uh, right across the government, every ministry has to say, what happened in rural Ontario with this policy? And I can tell you the construct we currently have, that doesn't happen. Uh, and that, to me, may be the crux of the matter. Yeah, I actually think it's going to get better. Fortunately, I had that experience so to work with my colleagues right here, like Lou Rinaldi, who helped craft the program, helped develop the criteria, helped implement the program, and then actually ran the program. And uh, when I see its success, that's the kind of thing I want to see Lou doing again. No, just I'm glad I've sat right here today uh, to, to uh, promote our leadership, uh, uh, you know, that we're coming up. And, uh, uh, and I'm delighted that she chose uh, Northumberland yeah. County to, 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 to listen because I think, uh, you know, all of Ontario needs to play a role and this writing is no different now. So I'm delighted to be here. Great year, eight years working with Sandra and hope she gets back there. Well, today it really was, uh, thankfully, very good mention of the Rural Economic Development yes. Fund, uh, the Eastern Development Fund that actually worked. Uh, which was great. I think there was a good conversation around skill trade, uh, which is an issue in rural Ontario generally. We certainly heard about it here again today. And how we can do that. If your local economic development officers are looking to say to the future investment, in five years we can guarantee you're going to have a skilled workforce you need, what are we doing about it today to make sure that's the case? And I think that calls on a really good focus on skill trades. Um, and are our programs working to convince young people to stay in trades, to train for trades, make it easier to train for trades from rural Ontario. So that speaks to a whole bunch of potential solutions in my view. Okay. Yeah, that was probably the common, the one common discussion across the board was on skilled trades today. So it did come up as it is a given that everyone demands it and needs it. So when all of a sudden you might hear announcements about, oh, more broadband, it was like, it's about time. It's not, oh, isn't that great? It's, it's about time because it is an absolute uh, function for business today. So you have to have it. Okay. So yeah, that was mentioned today. Would this be, is this part of the Eastern Ontario Development Fund or is that a separate? Uh, no, it's yeah, separate. That, that was a, the, the investment that uh, was made in broadband in Eastern Ontario. It was $55 million provincially, $55 million. And today I think 95% of rural Eastern Ontario has broadband. At 95%. Yeah. The, the little bit in Ontario that's still left, and when we were doing this, we were we did our arguing and back and forth with the federal government at least three years ago to land on, would we even agree on where we were going to go next? Um, what's left, frankly, is very expensive because it's not a lot of population. Uh, it, is, it is the really difficult part that's left. Um, but this big swath that just came out is going to be a huge help uh, to get everybody literally to high speed.
Absolutely. Right by the NMA. They're probably going to push all of it in here. Exactly. <laughs> we don't pay them. Oh, no. Do you want everyone to look right here? Okay. 